Hi everyone, welcome to part two of the visual guide for the Urbone Monastery. This is the newest 24-man alliance raid made available by patch 4.5 and Final Fantasy XIV, A Requiem for Heroes. This video deals with the last two bosses of the raid. If you're looking for the first two bosses, please check out the link in the description below the video. My name is Miztech and I'll be your raid guide. In this section of trash, you'll face off against a few waves of ads. For the most part, it's your standard tank and spank. When the Dark Crusader spawns, a number of circles will periodically spawn that require a specific number of players to stand in them to lock them up. If this is done incorrectly, you'll spawn more ads. Heal through the raid-wide blasts and dodge AoEs. Once the Dark Crusader is destroyed, you'll reach the third boss Orlando. An important thing to notice is the three swords he wields. Throughout the encounter, they will indicate incoming attacks, so it's a good idea to get used to looking at them frequently. First off, the three alliances will be split around the platform on the circular sections so that there is a circle section in between them on both sides. You can do this either by standing in between between two segments, or standing in one segment and claiming the segment to your left or your right. It doesn't really matter which way you do it, as long as everyone in the raid is on the same page. This will allow enough room to handle specific mechanics. Cleansing Strike will deal damage and afflict all players with a 15 second doom timer. Healers will need to top everyone off before the timers run out or you will die. For easy healing, have each alliance stacked together during this time. When the boss casts TG Holy Sword, you'll need to carefully pay attention to the position of his swords. If they are somewhat horizontal and pointing to specific platforms, these platforms will soon be targeted for attack. Players should make sure they are not standing on the platforms at this time. If the swords are vertical, the players will need to move inside the boss's hitbox to avoid the incoming room-wide attack. If the swords are horizontal, but held up in the air like this without pointing to specific platforms, players will need to move out of melee range to avoid the incoming point-blank AoE. These attacks all have the same name, with the difference being the position of his swords, so it's very important that each player looks at the sword to determine where each safe spot is. Getting hit by any of these attacks will deal high damage and place a stacking vulnerability up debuff on you. This will happen throughout the entire encounter, so pay attention. Shadow Blade will mark up a player in each alliance with this huge red marker. After a short time, this player will drop an AoE underneath them that will grow over time. Since this AoE grows quite a bit, and if two of them end up touching, they will explode, deal high damage, and apply bleed debuffs on all players. To handle this, each alliance can use the platform to their left or clockwise as their drop-off point for Shadow Blade. This ensures that there will be ample room to avoid overlap as each AoE grows. Crush Helm will target the three tanks with a moderate tank buster. The tanks will also be afflicted with a dispellable debuff during this time. Shield and heal through this as necessary. Dusk Blade will spawn six circles on each platform section that requires three players standing in each. If not enough players are in a circle, it will explode, deal high damage, and debuff the entire raid. Since this will probably kill you, to ensure each circle has enough players, each alliance can be responsible for their own circle and the one on the segment to the left or clockwise of their position. Following this to your left principle will hopefully keep unnecessary confusion about who should be handling what circle to a minimum. Crush Weapon will target a random player from each alliance with this red and black marker. After a short time, a massive AoE circle attack will target the player and then follow them for three hits. This moves quite fast and will deal insane damage. To handle this, the player can start running to their left or the clockwise platform to drag the AoE attack from the rest of their alliance. Eventually, the boss will cast Colosseum and disappear, transporting the players to another platform where they will have to deal with three night ads. Orlando is channeling his swordplay gauge and you'll have until he reaches 100 to destroy the ads. Have each alliance pick up and burn down an ad. Hollowed Bolt will mark up a random player with this orange marker. This player will drop a point blank AoE and a donut AoE in sequence in a random order underneath them. To facilitate dodging, the affected player can move to the edge of the platform to minimize the impacted area. All other players can stand near the edge of the first AoE to quickly move into the next safe zone after the first blast. Immediately after, a player will be marked for stacking and the alliance should share the incoming damage. Divine Ruination will mark a player with this purple marker and tether and eventually target them with a long column AoE. Moving this to the edge away from the rest of the alliance can help avoid excess damage. These add mechanics will repeat until they are destroyed. Stack up to cooldown shield and heal through the boss's ultimate attack. Immediately after, you'll be returned to the original platform and the encounter resumes. The same mechanics will repeat with the addition of a few new ones. Crush Armor will target a player in each alliance with a transferable tether. The active tether player will be targeted for an attack that places a physical vulnerability up debuff on them. Since the tanks are constantly taking physical damage from auto attacks, I highly recommend that this mechanic is not handled by the tanks. Instead, you can have any other player grab the tether to take a single hit before passing it to the next player. Do this until the tether disappears. The next Shadow Blade attack will now target two players from each alliance. 
one of these markers can be dropped off on the platform to the left or clockwise of your alliance just as before, while the other is dropped in the back of the platform you're currently standing on. Players will need to be careful not to get caught in the AoEs as they grow. Crush Accessory will form ice AoEs that cover most of the platform except for small circles on each segment. Ice Wolf adds will also spawn and begin to burst. Each alliance must destroy the ice chunk near them before the cast goes off. If you find that you need to move to the adjacent section to reach your ice, make sure you don't linger in the frozen section too long. At this point, you've seen every mechanic he will throw at you, and it's a matter of repeating everything until the boss is down. The final boss is Ultima, the High Seraph. Holy 4 will target the ground under random players for AoE blasts. Move out of these as necessary. Aura Light will create a point blank AoE around her and three line AoEs. The line AoEs will create icy barriers that players will not be able to pass, so be sure to spread out in advance. Immediately after, more Holy 4 circles appear and the players will be marked with these AoE circles. They will need to spread apart to avoid overlapping. You are limited by the icy barriers from Aura Light, so be careful when spreading. Grand Cross will spawn three massive shards on the platform in a random pattern. Each shard will explode in platform-wide cross patterns, creating specific safe zones. Players must quickly identify which section of the platform is safe and move to it to avoid death. When the boss spawns Demi Aquarius, you'll see a familiar face that will cast Dark Eero, causing a number of Eeros to spawn that move in a straight line across the platform. Players will need to avoid these as they continue to avoid the attacks from Ultima. When the boss spawns Demi Ares, Bellius will cast Time Eruption, and the entire platform will be targeted by the familiar Time AoEs. Find the slow moving clocks, wait for the fast clocks to explode, and then move into the resulting safe zone. Don't forget to spread for the Holy Four markers as well. Demi Leo will summon Hushmel, who will cast Control Tower. The two towers will form in front of the boss and then be sliced by Hushmel. Watch which way they are sliding and move out of the way to avoid the falling towers. Flare will target three players with the move away markers. These players will need to move away from the alliance to minimize damage. At 50%, the boss will become immune and all three demi bosses will spawn again, throwing out their respective attacks all at once. You'll need to find the slow clocks first and then move into the safe spots created by the fast clocks. Stand together for Doritos and dodge Ewers as they move across the platform. Players with the fire markers should move away and all players will need to dodge the AoE circles that they drop. The hardest thing to watch for here is the extreme edge cast from Hashmel somewhere on the side of the platform. You'll need to move to the side of the platform opposite the glowing arm or you'll suffer high damage, a bleed, and probably die. Finally, the boss will cast Ultimate Illusion, a massive blast that will destroy literally everything and anyone not inside the bubble created by your new friends. The entire raid will need to stand inside and prepare for some massive healing. Ultima will also try to break through your barrier and you'll need to destroy the ruination before the barrier strength fails and you die. Continue to heal through the attack until Ramza saves you and you land back on the platform. From this point on, if you wipe, you will return to this checkpoint. In this phase, Ultima is no longer stationary and can be picked up by a tank. Demi Virgo will spawn a number of adds on the edge of the platform that will throw out large column AoEs. The boss will also cast East or Westward March during this time, forcing the adds in their AoEs to eventually move East or West before they explode. To handle this, players can stand in the AoEs when they first appear, ensuring they're in the new safe spots when they are pushed. Redemption is a massive tank buster on the primary target. Cool down and heal through this as necessary. The next Grand Cross cast will bring down the same ice shards you're familiar with, but now you must also watch for the east or westward marches. The march pushes the first two shards, so it's just a matter of adjusting to the new safe zone once the final shard plops down. You have a few seconds to adjust here before the AoE blasts go off, so stay on your toes. The next Demi Virgo cast can spawn a number of small circles with arrows on them. These arrows indicate where the Virgo adds will eventually crash onto the platform, dealing massive damage and debuffs to the entire raid. If this happens, you will probably die. To avoid this, players can follow each circle and stand under where the adds come down to clash with them, keeping them from completing their attack. If you miss any of the adds, you will probably die, so spread out and make sure there are people following each circle. The next Demi Virgo cast will spawn one add that will tether to a random player and deal them damage over time. If this tether is intercepted, the new tether player will gain a damage up buff for their bravery. Healers keep an eye on these players as they can take a fair amount of damage. Multiple circle AoE traps will also appear on the platform before going invisible. You'll need to avoid these areas as necessary or you'll trigger an even bigger AoE that will bind any players caught inside. There are more Holy 4 AoEs and markers to spread out. At around 50%, the boss will teleport to an edge and knock back all players. A maze will form that players will need to traverse, dodging AoEs on their way back to the boss. During this time, if you're afflicted by the countdown debuffs, make sure you stop moving when the timers reach zero, or you will take massive damage. You won't be able to attack until you reach the lit area directly under the boss, so make sure you get there quickly. If you're targeted for AoEs, make sure you move away 
away from the rest of the group as necessary. If you're targeted with the flare marker, make sure you move very far away from the group to avoid excess damage. At this point, the platform will return to normal and the fight will resume. You'll have the same dummy Virgo attacks to deal with, so handle each in turn. The mechanics will repeat with some overlap until the boss is down. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time!